Greetings everybody, I want to welcome you here to the Prog Monster, a channel dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. My name is Murph, I am the host of this show. So we're here to do the Wednesday night show we do every Wednesday night called Wednesday Night's Favorites. Uh, the topic tonight, pretty straightforward, we've done one of these already, so we're going to be revisiting this with a second episode which is going to be entitled Five More Albums That Have Incredible Instrumentation. And I've picked out five that I like. We have one band coming back from the first episode. I decided to do this because I found the album. It was not where it was supposed to be. No surprise. I was um, uh, Some of the shells on some of my albums were damaged, so I've been replacing them slowly, and I found it in one of the, one of the disc areas that it wasn't supposed to be. So, having said that, what I'm doing today is we're going to be talking about five albums that have some very good, well-orchestrated music, but also some fantastic instrumentation by the members of the band. And I... Uh, I picked these five albums because certain aspects of the album I think are just outstanding when it comes to instrumentations. So tonight's five more. The first one is going to be from the group that uh, is getting a second shot here. They were on the first episode and they're back with this album, Freehand from Gentle Giant. This is an absolute killer album. I think my own personal feelings about this album... Um, Yes, Phil isn't on the band anymore, but sorry, John Weathers is in the band. He's now in the band, oh, at least on this album. Uh, this album came out, it does not say. Look at that, eh? Hmm. Oh, okay, so some of this stuff was recorded in April of 75. That's fine. It's an absolutely killer album. Um, the instrumentation is off the charts on this album to be honest with you my the opening track just the same it's one of their best instrumental songs they they play so many different instruments on it it's unbelievable and they don't just play them either they don't just play them they absolutely knock it out of the park with this some of the stuff on this album this one gives you your uh, lyrical sheet as well as a little bit of um, discussion about the songs but not too much but anyways um, absolutely killer stuff here. You got uh, Kerry Manier, who I think may be one of the best in, uh, best musicians out there, playing the keyboards at times, playing some guitar on this album, playing some bass on this album, playing the xylophone or the vibraphone at times on the album. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he actually plays cello on one of the instruments. Uh, one of the songs as well the guy is absolutely killer he's gifted in every every area like all the instruments he plays he doesn't just play them he plays them exceptionally well and you got gary green who is primarily a guitar player but not just a guitar player i think he's a very underrated fantastic guitar player he's just absolutely killer i love his style too it's just great you got John Weathers, who plays pretty much percussion, but also playing some guitar as well on this particular album. Um, and then you've got the frontman, Derek Shulman, who, uh, other than having a great voice, I think, also has some uh, awesome abilities playing a lot of kind of windwood instrument. Um, he plays this instrument. It looks kind of like a guitar. I don't. I can't remember what it's called. It's just basically a stick with one string, but he, he plays it fantastically. And then, of course, you got his brother Ray, who uh, phenomenal bass player and violinist as well. And this is a fat, absolutely killer albums. Um, I don't think there's many many rock albums that are as good as this one when it comes to the instrumentation. So General Giant's going to be the opener here, freehand. The next album up is not a is not a progressive album. I think it's the only one. Yeah, it's the only one I've selected that wasn't progressive, and there was none in the first one either. So this will be the first non-progressive album. Basically, it's non-progressive, but when you really analyze it, it's very progressive in a lot of ways too. And we're talking about Iron Maiden's Peace of Mind. 
great cover. I love it. Some of the songs on here are killer. You got some fantastic guitar soloing and guitar rifting throughout this entire album. I think the drums are absolutely spectacular as well. And you can't take nothing away from Steve Harris's fantastic bass playing. Um, this this has uh, where Eagles Dare, Revelations is on this album, Flight of Icarus, and The Trooper, of course, are all on this. This is the absolute killer album with some of the best guitar um best heavy metal guitar out there i think uh that dual guitar stuff is just absolutely killer and i think um mcbrain is just underrated as far as drummers go so iron maiden's peace of mind fantastic if you like that metal sound i think this is one of the better instrumental albums uh well it's not instrumental but instrument better albums with instrumentation next one this one has really grown over, grown over, <laughs> grown on me uh, so much. So, like, I love every single track on here. Some of the, the tracks, Born Brilliant, absolutely killer. There's some absolutely fantastic keyboard parts throughout this album. Very genesis -y sounding at times throughout the album, uh, but has some great bass lines. Um, I think the guitar tone is really solid. The whole album has fantastic production as well. This may be their best album. It's the best one I own, and they've got. So I've got a few others that I'm working my way through. So, yeah, just really killer instrumentation on that album as well. Next up, uh, this is an album I, I don't listen to as much, and I think the primary reason is that it, it's so bloody long that it's hard to get into, and we're talking about Thick as a Brick, Jethro Tull. This has some absolutely killer stuff going on between the flute and the guitar. The solos are fantastic. You've got some great keyboards going on here as well as that Barrymore Barlow uh, drums. Just killer here. Um, most of you have probably watched uh, Nomads, which was out last night, if you want to talk a little bit more about Barrymore Barlow. But on this album, he's a killer. This whole album is just killer, and it goes on at length with so much good stuff going on throughout the entire album. Almost passes without even notice, noticing how much time you've been listening to it. So it's a 22 minutes, almost 23 minutes on the front side, 21 all, a uh, little over 21 minutes on the back side and then there's also a live version on this as well for about 11 minutes uh, from Madison Square Gardens and an interview with uh, Jethro Tull's Ian Anderson, Martin Barr and Jeremy Hammond or Jeffrey Hammond Hammond yeah so yeah just some killer stuff here um, one of their better albums for instrumentation thick as a brick and I mean I could have went with uh, uh, Minstrels in the Gallery, I could have went from Songs from the Wood or Stormwatch, all these albums have some, some fantastic stuff going on. Next album is a live album, it's the first one I've done, and to be honest, I love all of these songs on the studio albums, but I think they're just that much better here on this live Venice album, and the main reason being is now you have um, Phil Collins and Steve Hackett playing uh, a lot of these songs um, well, the uh, the version, of course, of uh, The Knife, which is uh, on the original album, which doesn't feature these two. But then you have all of the other stuff. And these are all, like, top-notch Genesis songs here. They only have five on the album. Watchers of the Sky, Get Em Out by Friday, The Return of the Giant Hogweed, uh, Musical Box, and The Knife. Yeah, just absolutely killer, this album, with everything you could possibly want. Uh, from your keyboards, you got your legendary guitar playing from Steve Hackett. The drums are phenomenal from Phil Collins. And even some of the stuff that um, Mike Rutherford does on bass and guitar, pretty pretty solid stuff too. Primarily bass though, I think. So those are the five albums I chose for, uh, for five more albums with great, fantastic instrumentation. Genesis Live, their first live album. Um, probably if I owned um, Seconds Out, I probably would have used that, but I don't. Thick as a Brick, uh, the great concept album by Jethro Tull. Um, IQ's Dark Matter. Iron Maiden's Peace of Mind, throwing a little bit of a different feel. Not so much progressive, but still quite a bit on this. 
and the masterpiece of the four or five Gentle Giants Freehand, which I think may be their best instrumental album uh, inst with in great instrumentation. Yeah, just fantastic. So anyways, I hope you've liked this episode of Favorites. I'm, I probably will do another one. There, there was at least enough uh, material to do another five, but I won't do it for a bit. But um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell. And if you want, you can leave comments. Do you love these albums? Do you think that there's other albums that you would rather have seen? Um, <coughs> have you heard all these bands? Is there something new to you? Or is it something you've heard many times? Anyways, you can put all the comments you want in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. We will see you next Wednesday for another episode of Favorites. Um, next week is probably going to be a 25. I think I have one in mind, so that's likely what we're doing. So have yourself a good day, good evening, and see you next week. Goodbye.